Right before I drive away to forget Why do I give a damn at everything we say G'day guys, Chaos Chronicles. All right, so I've got a bit of a story for you today, another kind of war story, and it's got a real side note to it, you know, and I guess, you know, what I'm getting at is um, y- you've really got to be careful who you trust um, when you go to prison, and and not just with prison, this, this goes with life as well, just normal everyday life, but there are some people that are in prison that are just out for themselves and um as staunch as some people say that they are and they live by the code and this and that i would never snitch people will throw you under the bus at the first drop of a hat if it means that they're going to get out of trouble friend or not you know if someone's looking at some serious time or whatever you know a lot of the time people snitch when they preach a big game in the first place. So, all right, let's get to the bit of a war story. So um, I'd been moved to Barwon from Port Phillip um, so I could spend some time with my brother. My brother was up there. He's my co-offender on my big sentence. And um, so anyhow, um, yeah, I... um, yeah, went there to spend some time with my brother and, um, yeah, just chill out at Barn for a bit. And um, so anyway, I, I'd been there for about a week and then this other guy that um, I'd actually done some dealings with, that's what I'll say, some dealings with at um, uh, another prison at Port Phillip and um, he was on something that I was buying off him um, pharmaceutical-wise. He was getting it from the chemist at the prison, you know. And, um, yeah, so we, we had a little bit of a thing worked out. You know, he was on something that people will definitely stand over you for them. And so, you know, we kind of said that we'll look after him and he said that he'll look after us <clears throat> with with um these pills which was lyrica i'm not gonna lie and um this was before i was i was actually put on lyrica about three months after this funny enough and um yeah so anyway we built a bit of a a good rapport it turns out this guy knew a couple of the pow's um from years and years ago some of the older ones he knew one of them anyway and um so we used to do laps with this guy and he kind of got like a bit of a chip on his shoulder because his mate was, you know, one of the higher ups in the biggest prison gang in our state. And, um, yeah, so he kind of thought that he was a bit, bit, bit of it in a bit. And, um, you know, I really didn't take much notice of it, but I, of course noticed that he was, had changed his ways as soon as he realized that, you know, he was mates with a POW, but I can tell you right now, that that POW would not have approached that man in one way whatsoever unless he was on Lyrica. It was the only reason this guy wanted to be his friend, which means he was guaranteed free drugs whenever he wants, whenever he asks, because that's basically what you have to do or you end up with a shank sandwich in your ear hole. And, um, yeah, you know, so... Yeah, he got a little bit big for his britches. It was quite funny, you know. I heard him talking down to people sometimes. And then, you know, I heard them same people saying, mate, like, this guy's going to get taken out very soon. Like, he thinks that because he's mates with this person from that gang that that's going to stop people from, you know, wanting to attack him or whatever. <laughs> that's not the case i can promise you right that right now i say it all the time in prison you are just another bare bum in the shower exactly like chopper says it in the movie um no one is more important or more better although you know the geographics of it all will make you seem that but the reality is that you know no one's better than anyone else and although there is a hierarchy but that's the truth of it and you know you don't have to be scared of someone just because of who they are or who they associate with or who they don't associate with you know um but anyway so my time had come to leave right and so um at port phillip 
and jails like that, they'll tell you the day before that you're going. I know MRC, you know, some screws will tell you, all right, you're leaving tomorrow. If not, they'll tell you when you're already locked in your cell the night before so you can get stuff ready for the next morning when you leave, you know. But anyway, I didn't find out I was leaving until that day, which was quite funny because I was actually supposed to be on the escort so Tuesdays and Thursdays, buses go to Barwon and Marganite. And um, so I was supposed to be on that bus on Tuesday because I actually had my Supreme Court appeal. And um, you guys can see that if you Google my name, um, it says my name, Leif Hughes versus the Queen. That was my appeal at the Supreme Court. But anyway, because I was going on the bus, they had to make me, it was a big stuff up. They really stuffed up and the jail really gets in a lot of trouble when they don't have prisoners at court when they're supposed to be at court, you know? And so anyway, I actually was, when I was in court, the screws actually said that it was my fault. I refused to get on the bus. I'm looking at them going, I did not. You guys only told me I was on the bus two days. You didn't tell me I was getting on the bus on Tuesday. Anyway, I lost my appeal, long story short. I was trying to get, um, you know, time taken off, but it didn't work. Um, and, yeah, anyway, so I was still going on my way to Port Phillip. And um, so, anyway, you know, when you leave, when, when you're in prison and you're going – um, you, you tend to leave stuff with people, you know what I mean? You know, most of the time when you go into another prison and you've got more time to go, you're not going to give away all of your stuff. But if you've got stuff that come from that prison, you know, it was issued to you at that prison, you're not going to be able to take it out of there. You leave leave it with mates, you know what I mean? Everyone wants an extra towel. You know, they do dunas and duna covers at Barwon. So everyone wants, you know, their own duna cover and stuff like that. You can take your, your Duna covers that you buy, but you can't take the jail issued Duna covers, obviously. So anyway, I went and told this guy that I was leaving, this guy that I was buying the pills off and, you know, he was associating with the POW thinking he was a hard man. And um, so anyway, I went and seen him and said, look, mate, um, I'm going. Thanks for your help. Here's a towel. You can have that. And I can't remember what it was. I think it was like a Collingwood towel or something like that. And I barracked for Carlton. So it was useless to me. I actually used it as a toilet mat. So, um, but anyway, I did wash it. And so um, I, I said, you know, here, you can have this. And he was absolutely mortified that that was all that I offered him, you know. And he's like, oh, haven't you got anything else? I'm like, bro, I've got nine years. I've still got five to go. So, no, not really, bro. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate all the help that you have done for me. But no, buddy, I have nothing else for you. And he got all up about it. Still took my towel, though, mind you. Still took the towel. And, um, yeah, I remember actually saying to my brother, if I wasn't going today, I'd probably chin him. Um for his attitudinal problem that needed readjusting. Um, but anyway, they moved me to Port Phillip. And so I've been at Port Phillip now for probably a week, maybe nine days. It wasn't two weeks, but it was getting to two weeks. And so anyway, I get called into the um, chief's office, the three Pippa. And um, I'm like, oh, what's going on here? And he's like, so do you know so-and-so? I won't say his last name, but I'll say his name's Jamie. So if he's watching this, you know I'm talking about you, mofo. And um, anyway, so the screws go, oh, do you know this person? And so my instant reaction, which most criminals that, you know, stick by the code and know what the go is would say, no, no, I don't, which is exactly what I said. And, um, you know, he's like, well, are you sure about that? And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm pretty sure I know who I know and, you don't know who I know and don't know. So I'm telling you I don't know this person. So that means I don't know this person. So anyhow, he said, so you wouldn't have given him anything when you left to go to Port Phillip. I said, definitely not. Definitely not. And so anyway, in my head, I'm thinking, bro, this guy's lagged me. This guy's lagged me for something. And um, 
So anyway, he said, so that means if you didn't, you didn't give him that towel, then that means that, you know, those 15 Lyrica pills that were in there weren't yours either. And you know what I mean? And I was like, well, no, obviously not. I'm not on Lyrica. So, you know, where am I going to get them from? He's like, come on, we all know that you can get drugs, this and that. And I'm like, well, I'm fucking telling you right now, they are not my drugs. And I swear to God, 100%, they were not my fucking drugs. And, you know, so he's, what's happened is he's got his cell ramped rated when they search his cell, they call it being ramped, right? So he's got his cell ramped. He's obviously had his own pills, what he sells around the jail. And, um, you know, he's he's tried to, like, say that it was me that, that left him in that towel when I gave it to him when I went to another jail. I could not believe it. I would nearly fell off the frigging the chair in the chief's office. I was like, I actually cannot believe that this has happened. This guy is claiming that it is all big and mighty now because he's mates with all the POWs. And um, so, yeah, in my head, I'm thinking, you've got to go, mate. You really have got to go. So anyway, it's alleged, it is alleged that I had sent a kite up to Barwon Prison to get this guy's face cut, right? Because um, the same day that the escort got there from Port Phillip, Someone had ventured up to him and give him a buck fifty right across his face, and um, you know, thank your mother for the rabbits, mate. And so, you know, he probably would have had no no idea what that was for until you know the person that whopped him said that was for Biff, you know, allegedly. Now, I'm not saying that I know anything about this. Absolutely, I didn't know anything about that. That would be incriminating me in a crime I know nothing about. If somebody, because I have respect in the prison, wants to, you know, take someone out on their own behalf out of respect for me, what can I do about that? What can I do about that little scenario? I can't do nothing about that little scenario except for smile outside and laugh on the inside, which is exactly what I did, mind you. So I guess my moral of this story and the whole reason I made this story is because, you know, there are not many people in prison that generally want to be your friend. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there is people, but a lot of them have some kind of ulterior motive and there is all, there's some kind of second secret agenda to why they want to be your friend. Do you know what I mean? You might be getting visits. They might want you to kick drugs. You might have money getting sent in. They might want you, you know, just to rinse you for everything you've got. Just keep your eyes out, you know, for people out there when you're in prison and not just prison. This is on the outside as well. Do you know what I mean? There are a lot of chameleons out there that can blend into their surroundings absolutely perfect and let you believe that they are exactly what they tell you that they are. And when the absolute truth is that, you know, they're a snake, they're a coward, and they will snitch at the first drop of the hat. Now, generally, you know, if you're not doing a life of crime and you're not living that life, generally you're not going to have mates that do that, but you still do. You do not live a life of crime and do drugs and that. You still have shifty mates that will try and fuck your missus when you go to jail. They will try and do all this kind of shit. Do you know what I mean? And they are not your real mates. But my whole point of this whole video is, you know, that guy was like preaching that he was my mate, this and that. And, and you know, before he was mates with the POWs, his claim to fame was that he was mates with me and my brother, you know. And we, we, we kind of let him ride on our coattails because, you know, in a way, I suppose I was using him in a way. Do you know what I mean? But I didn't come up to him and offer him Lyrica to make sure he doesn't get stood over. That was that was an offer that got put to me and I just said, yep, fair dinkum, I will take that one. Fair suck of the old sav, mate, that is on. And so, you know, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, I wish that none of you have to experience prison, but the truth is I've got a fair few people, um, you know, we're, we're at 19,500 followers now, you know, only in um, six months, so we're done pretty well. And I've got a lot of people that watch my stuff 
that are looking at going to prison sometime in the near future. So I guess this is an eye opener on that you can't have your blinkers on in prison. You really have to pay attention to your surroundings and just know that if someone is coming up to you and trying to be your friend and it seems a little bit out of the ordinary, it probably is out of the ordinary. And um, so, yeah, you know, and, you know, for him doing his little snitch and trying to say that was me, that guy's got a scar that goes from his ear to his um, the corner of his mouth for the rest of his life, a big two-blade scar so they couldn't stitch it up, you know, and was it worth it? Absolutely not, you know. Could he have kept his mouth shut and just copped it like a man like the rest of us have to in jail? Yeah, he should have done that and he probably wouldn't have ended up like that. But that is, you know, there's another lesson in that right there that jail is a very fucking dangerous place where, you know, you could think that you're all sweet, you've been kicking around the jail for 12 months and then boom, someone rocks off the escort and without even putting their bags down, they walk up to you and buck 50 you across the face with a box cutter, you know? And, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's basically the, 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 the crux of my story is to be careful who you trust. And I'll tell you what, over my 20 years of being a, a criminal, I've had so many mates that I thought that I could trust that screwed me over in the end. And, um, you know, be careful who you tell things to. Um, you know, there's a good old saying that um, three can keep a secret when two are dead. And I love that saying because it's true. Secrets are secrets for a reason. They're meant to be kept on board. And, you know, some things other people aren't supposed to know. But anyway, there you go. That is my don't trust video and be careful who you trust. If you don't want to get buck 50 across the face when you think you've been all right at jail by someone that just got off the escort, don't do drugs and crime because you are only going to end up in prison and it's only a matter of time, believe me. And like I've said, it's only not a matter of time when you are a snitch. That's the only time you can do drugs and crime and crime and drugs and drugs and crime and not get caught. It just very rarely happens. Yes, people do it. But not you. You're a snitch if that's what's going on. All right, guys. I've been the Chaos Chronicles. We out. Also, one more thing. Don't forget to smash that notification bell. Smash a subscribe in there. And then that way, if you've subscribed to me, you chuck a comment in there. I will do my absolute best to answer your comment with a video. All right, guys. We out. Chaos Chronicles. We out. I am also the guy who decides if you and your friends walk out of here or not.